Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Harachakwadash. Double honors as always to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here or bear. And the sincere salutations as always to the rest of the hopeful elected nation of Israel, which consists of our sincere elders and Akim of Great Millstone, the Akim on down that teach the likewise doctrine, the speckled bird Hebrews like foreigners scattered among the heathen of like the heathen, the sincere Akim of the nation of Israel, who are not teachers but are true believers in Yahweh Bashem Shah and rehearse his righteous acts in truth and sincerity as well as the sincere Agwathim of the nation of Israel, which is to say the sincere sisters of the nation of Israel listening in silence and meekness, as the scriptures command to do so. And this is a quick epistle that I wanted to get through the spirit, all right, touching upon the topic of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem Shah's love for his chosen people, all right? And I wanted to start off by getting the Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse, uh, starting at verse 22. And it reads, As for the mysteries of the Most High Power, Yahweh, Basham Yahushai, they knew them not, neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness, nor discerned a reward for blameless souls. Okay? In verse 23, for the most high power Yahweh made man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Right? So keeping this in mind, the Heavenly Father Yahweh, through his only begotten Son Yahweh Shai, he created his chosen people. The true biblical Hebrew Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and speckled bird Israelite foreigners to be immortal like him. All right, this is what the new covenant entails. All right, but as this verse says right here, the last verse in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, okay, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 24, nevertheless, through envy of the devil, Salaki, nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold of his side do find it right in that envy of the devil okay it came uh in the garden when eve uh she was beguiled by the serpent into uh consuming that uh, forbidden fruit which was that other philosophy that was outside of the law statutes and commandments of yahweh basham yahweh shah and that being said okay that being said we see the results of that we see all of the ways that's outside of the heavenly father's um law statutes and commandments lead to death okay you know, this has to be brought out to end that mysticism that the Christian church, all right, the false prophet is pushing out. The uh, Roman Catholic Church and all of its daughter churches, this has to be uh, said so that our people can wake up out of the uh, out of this uh, nonsense, out of the folly. Because understanding that it wasn't a, a fruit that was consumed by a woman that she shared with her husband that a talking snake gave to her, that helps you actually apply the Bible in real life because... People call themselves Christians, but one thing that that uh that really um one thing that helps a, a Christian to stay in the dark and lacking understanding is the mythology that's associated with Christianity. All right, because Christianity, for the most part, is a bunch of people that's ended up uh, tripping over the stumbling blocks that the Heavenly Father Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai has put into the Holy Bible. All right, but the true men of the Lord through the Spirit and power Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, blessing them with the Rechak Wadash. Starting with our elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone and Akimon down, we have the eyes off to see through the dark parables and the um and the metaphors of the holy scriptures. So we don't trip up when we hear about um a serpent like man, Salakia, a serpent. We understand that that's a serpent like man because, like our elders say, you have to get into the Hebrew and the Greek. All right, but point is, the heavenly Father Yahweh Bashmi El Shai, He made us to be immortal. You know, so if we would if we were to listen to Him. If we were to perfectly obey what he told us to do, then we would have been able to partake in the fullness of these blessings, okay? But like, um, as the scriptures are letting us know, we won't be able to come into the fullness of the blessings that he gave us until the kingdom, where we're in um, incorruptible bodies that are not programmed to sin. The Heavenly Father, he's going to renew us through Hamashiach Yahweh Shai's only begotten son, okay? But you have to understand, the Heavenly Father, he's not petty, all right? He's not like... um um. He's not like two-third Israelites, okay? He's not like Esau, Edom, the self-proclaimed so-called white man, the red Hebrew Edomite, that old serpent called the devil and Satan that the Bible speaks of. The Heavenly Father, he wasn't so angry at Adam um, and Eve for what, what they did in the garden 
and so angered the nation of Israel, their descendants, that he said that, okay, I wanted to make you immortal, but I'm not dealing with you no more. No, no. He put us away for a season, okay, but through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, all right, the elect, first and foremost, have been redeemed back unto the heavenly father. And Adawan Ratazah, we be found in that elect number. But as it is written, all Israel shall be saved. The two thirds will have to learn after death by pain. The hopeful elect, all right, we are striving to be found of the elect because we, Yahweh Bashkin al Shah called us, all right, into this knowledge and this truth. And we, you know, we hit the ground running. Every brother in his own lot. As the scripture says, you know, as far as um, receiving the uh, the word, okay, some receive it and they yield uh, 30 fold, 60 fold, and some yield 100 fold. All right, but the point is, uh, nevertheless, the hopeful elect, when we receive the word, we do what's pleasing unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bosh, me on shout to the best of our ability. We move with the fear of the Lord. And that's something that two-thirds of our people don't do. And like it says right here in Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter, which I, I recommend uh, brothers read the entire chapter. It's beautiful. It gives you the contrast between the, the righteous and the wicked. And it gets more in-depth into it. But this that's what this chapter is getting into, is letting you know that, look, those that are wicked, they don't discern the reward for a blameless soul. They think that it's folly or they think that it's foolishness uh, for the men of the Lord to risk their lives and their freedom for the word of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, which shows you that these Christians, they don't truly believe. All right, I remember the comedian Eddie Griffin some years ago, he made a joke about how, uh, you know, those Muslims, and that's bugged out too, that Islam is just another branch of the Roman Catholic Church when you get into the history. He said that a Muslim will strap a, a you know, a B-O-M-B -O -O on his chest and, you know, blow itself up over some Muhammad. But if you uh, uh, put the same thing on a Christian, you know, to uh, to blow themselves up over some Jeebus cross, they'll be like, oh, I don't think Jeebus want me to do that. He just bought me this new house and I think he want me to live in it. That's the spirit that the Christians come in. They don't understand that all throughout this book, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashmi al has been prepping his chosen people, his elect, to be pilgrims in the earth. All right. And when you get that word pilgrim, it goes into people moving from place to place, seeking a holy land. And that's what we're doing through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi al We understand that this this uh, this current kingdom is not our rest. All right. It's not just Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great is the capital of, of the wickedness. But, you know, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Babylon is just its capital. And when you get into how empires and kingdoms work, all right, you have a capital city that the, uh, that the emperor, the main guy, the top guy rules out of, but everything else is still under his jurisdiction. He has different uh, viceroys and governors to watch over his provinces, different eunuchs, so forth and so on. And that's, it's no different with, um, with Babylon, the great, the U.S. of A., which is the second leg of the Roman Empire. All right. But that being said, let me get the next precept going back into what the Lord intended for us. All right. The book of Ecclesiastes, if I remember correctly, Ecclesiastes chapter, let me see if it's chapter 9, it's a lot here, maybe chapter 10, here we go, this is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, and I'll start at verse 28, and it reads, which my, it's like here. Which yet my soul, oh, what the fuck, man? These people are just stupid here. It's a lot here. <sighs> Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 28. Which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those I have not found. Okay? So this is talking about how King Solomon, the wisest man, he was talking about how he couldn't find... Uh, he said amongst a thousand men, he only found one righteous, but amongst a thousand women, he found none righteous. So keeping that into account, all right, that goes into how, how bugged out this world has become since the fall and how it gets worse the more our, cho the, our people, the true biblical Hebrew Israelites, keep choosing these uh, these false ways that are outside of the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai. But reading on uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Lo, this only have I found, that the Most High Power, Yahweh hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Right, and the Heavenly Father making you upright, what, what's one of the benefits of that? You will be immortal, okay? If we were to keep His law, statutes, and commandments perfectly, there's many blessings uh, associated with the obedience to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bashmi, Al-Shah. One of the main ones that most people don't understand, especially in the Christian church, 
it's immortality. Okay? They they um that that uh image of Jeebus cross, it prevents them from really seeing uh the true scope of what the Heavenly Father Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah is trying to do for us. And even our, our, even ourselves, we know in part and we prophesy in part. But with the little bit the Lord has given us, because it is associated with the truth of the scriptures, we have this hope. And that's the beauty of it. All we need is just a little bit of what um what he has in store for us. Just that, that bit of a preview that he's given us that we can see through faith in him. That gives us the fuel we need to uh to put these mortal lives on the line so we can inherit an incorruptible crown in the kingdom and a mortal life that won't that can't be taken away. Alright? Just like our Lord Yahweh Shah said, he lays down his life so they can pick it back up again. No man taketh it from him. Roughly paraphrasing. That's in the book of St. John, the tenth chapter. Alright. Um now, let me see what else I got right here. One last precept and I'll wrap it up. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 8. Okay. And I'm going to start at verse 3. And it reads, When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowls of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. O Lord Yahweh, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Amen. So the Lord, he basically, like uh, King David is saying right here in this psalm, if I remember correctly, um, yeah. What he's saying right here in this psalm is that, look, the Lord has made us a little low, it's like a little lower than the angels. And what makes us a little lower than the angels? The fact that we're in sinful flesh. We're in these everlasting chains of darkness. Okay. If you get the book of uh, St. Jude, okay, I believe it's around about the fifth or the sixth verse. It's what well, I think the fourth verse, Salaki, if I'm getting it wrong, but it speaks about the angels that kept not their first estate. That's referring to the Israelites. All right. Because we... Uh, through the fall of Adam, okay, by being in the flesh, all right, we're in these everlasting chains of darkness. We're prone to sin and we're prone to uh, uh, transgressing the laws of the Heavenly Father, and the wages of sin is death. <clears throat> the angels, they don't sin, so they're immortal. They have spiritual power, they can do things that we can't do, all right. <clears throat> now, in the kingdom of heaven, all right, we'll receive those extraterrestrial bodies where we'll be able to interact with the physical as well as the spiritual as well as enjoy the pleasures that come with the physical without any of the drawbacks you know any of the uh, the nasty side effects such as uh succumbing to the flesh uh simping for the woman uh committing adultery that you want you know you want somebody else's woman so bad you got to commit adultery or uh coveting in your neighbor's possessions um eating unclean foods and just being in subject under the heathen all of these things will be done away once the heavenly father sends Yahweh Shai, his only begotten son, uh, to return. All right, let me see if I can get that precept real quick. That'll be the last one. The book of Malachi chapter 4 verse 1, and it reads, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. In the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord Yahweh Tazabawath, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Right, so, <coughs> Salakia root or branch you know that gets into not being left with any offspring okay now ultimately we understand the icbm nuclear missile destruction it's not going to destroy all of the edomites okay <clears throat> it's going to save a remnant of the edomites you know chiefly amalek going to be the first fruits of slavery all right and then after the first 1000 years of uh, hardcore slavery under the israelites in the kingdom of heaven under Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, whom the workly calls Jesus Christ, then all the Edomites, whether it be an Amalekite, a Temanite, you name it, all of the Edomites are going to be uh, rounded up and destroyed. Okay? And on this side, the two-thirds, they're going to be completely eradicated. Two-thirds of the nation of Israel, all right, they're going to be destroyed. <coughs> so like, they're going to be destroyed and then come back to the loins of the righteous elect Israelites Okay, that Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah is dealing with because reincarnation is biblical and reincarnation has always been in effect. Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah has always had it that way where people pass away and then they come back every three and four generations in their father's seed line. You know, <clears throat> you can get the law of the kinsman redeemer about that. But anyway, uh, Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. 
But unto you that fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Right. And that son is spelled S-U-N, but it's still talking about our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Okay. He's going to come, you know, he's that, um, <clears throat> he's that bright and morning star in righteousness. Okay. He's going to come with that glory, that, um, that wisdom of righteousness and that, uh, that power. Okay. He's going to come and put down all rulership and authority. And he's going to heal the nation of Israel, all right? Because those that are doing their best, <clears throat> those of us that are the hopeful elect, we're like it unto, you know, a person that has to go to work every single day with a chronic illness. And the chronic illness that we have is um, sinning against Yahweh Bashem al Shah, you know, even when we don't want to. All right? Not being able to keep the laws that commandments perfectly, you know, not there, there being laws, the simple fact that there's laws that brothers don't know about at any given moment that they're breaking. You know, that's part of the sickness. Now, the Lord, he has mercy and uh, grace for that. But, you know, that's just us acknowledging that, look, we need Yahweh Shah because in the kingdom, as it says in the book of Hebrews, the eighth chapter, uh, no man shall say, know the Lord. So like it says, neither shall any man have to teach his neighbor saying, know the Lord, for they all shall know the Lord from the least to the greatest. OK, that's another blessing we want. We want it where as beautiful as the ministry is in teaching, we want it where all of our people uh, know the Lord. All right, we understand two thirds are not designed to get it on this side, which is why, like our elder apostles always say, you know, we don't waste time with debates; it's frivolous. But for those that truly seek, so like you, those that true, in truth and sincerity seek Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai, okay, he's gonna um, he's gonna deliver them out of all troubles. Even those that have to get martyred for his namesake, they'll be the first resurrected. All right, but you have to believe that we can always give you these precepts, but we can't uh, put the fear of the Lord in you. We can't put the faith in Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai in you. That's why you have to study this year, so approved, pray, fast, and actually give that diligence to make your calling and election sure. Do what you, do what the scriptures uh, tell you and outline what the elect would do. Do what do um perform elect Israelite behavior. Perform the behaviors of a citizen of Zion, because the scriptures do tell you that. All right. To the best of your ability and just pray the lord has mercy on you and reveals you to be one of his elect because that's all you can do you can't make yourself one of the elect you can only just do what the lord has put in your lot but you owe it to the lord to you know offer up your body as a living sacrifice that's your reasonable service but that's all i have in this epistle hopefully this lesson was edifying and exhorting to the elect of the nation of israel to the hopeful elect of the nation of israel once again i want to give all praises honor and glory to our beloved heavenly father and only be god the son our beloved lord and savior yahweh bahasham yahweh shai bahasham harachak wadash Double honors as always to our apostles and our elders, a great millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bear. And the sincere citations as always to the rest of the hopeful elected in the nation of Israel, which consists of our sincere elders and Akim of Great Millstone and the Akim on down to teach the likewise doctrine and truth and sincerity. The speckled bird Hebrews are like foreigners scattered among the heathen, that look like the heathen. The sincere Akim of the nation of Israel that are not in a lot of being teachers, but are true believers in Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai and rehearses righteous acts and truth and sincerity. And the sincere Akwathium of the nation of Israel, which is to say the sincere sisters of the nation of Israel, listen in silence and meekness as the scriptures command to do so. Kwam Yasharala and Abba Babal. We're almost out of here. Adawan Rathazah, we got next. Adawan Rathazah. Shema, Yasha Allah, Yahawa, Allah Hayanawa, Yahawa, Achad. Wa, Yahawa Bahasham, Yahawa Shai, Baba Kusha, Baba Kusha, Baba Kusha, Shalach Rayam, Wa Ainashim, Wa Haragim, Wa Ashim, Wa Abadim, Wa Mashapatim, all call Adawamim. Wa Gawayim, Wa Ayab Yibnawa, Wa Babal, Wa Babal, Wa Babal, Wa Babal, Aitha, 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 Tawada, Tamya, Tawab, Aman. Shalom.